Well, so today we're talking, what is risk tolerance? You know, I know you've heard that term, risk tolerance. In fact, you may have even gone online and taken some assessment to try to figure out what exactly is your risk tolerance. You know, to put it simple in my financially simple language, risk tolerance for most people boils down to how much should you have in stocks versus how much should you have in bonds? That's the ultra simple version of it. Now, many times we'll say, how much should you have in equities or how much should you have in fixed income? Another way to say it is stocks versus bonds. There's a couple of misnomers out there, so I wanted to kind of show you how some of the internet guidance can be a little off. Here's some things I pulled up. When I was, did a search for risk tolerance, I found out that many times folks will say, if you're 100 years old, subtract your age, so let's say you're 50 years old, or let's say you're 60 years old, and the difference, so let's say you take 100 minus 60, you should have 40 or 40% 40 of your investment in stocks. That's one method I read on the internet. Another method I read on the internet said whatever your age is, that's how much you should have in stock. One method, you take 100 minus your age of 60 and now you should have 40% of your portfolio in stocks. Or if you're 60, you should have 60% of your portfolio in stocks. You see, neither one of those things makes sense to me. Does that mean like if you had a gazillion dollars that you don't need anything? You know, some people say, well, if you have a lot of money, you could be very conservative. Well, does that mean I can like, if I don't have a lot of money, I don't have to ever invest in anything? Well, that doesn't make any sense. Or some folks will say, if you don't have a lot of money, you could be aggressive. Well, does that mean I, if I don't have a lot of money, I can go down to the local convenience store and invest it all in lottery tickets? I mean, that's pretty aggressive, right? See, none of that really makes sense. So I want to break it down today for you on what risk tolerance is, and I want to use a real life example. This is a client, and this individual is 55 years old. Now, at 55 years old, they currently have about $500,000 in investment accounts. They want to retire at 65, so we have 10 years in order to get them to that retirement. And what they said is, Justin, I want to retire at age 65 with $100,000 a year in income. All right, that's their goal. So we realize that we have roughly about 120 months 10 years, get them to where they want to be. Now, we did ran a calculation and we know they're going to receive roughly $25,000 in Social Security benefits. So the big number that we're trying to fix is $75,000 a year. Because we want $100, we're getting $25,000 from Social Security. Whenever the client came to us, he said, I'm super, super, super conservative. I went, okay, tell me what that means. I don't want to lose anything. Okay, you don't want to lose anything. How much are you saving right now? And I was expecting to hear four, five, six thousand a month. Hey, Justin, we're saving two thousand dollars a month. Let's run the math to see what rate of return we need to make off your current lifestyle to get you to your goal. So I ran a couple of scenarios and I said, well, if we make seven percent, then we're going to end up with one point three five million dollars. And at that bucket of money, we take 4% of the income, we could get $54,000 off of that money. So if we add 54 plus our 25,000, we're not at 100 grand. That means if we're using this assumption, we have to earn more than 7%. We actually have to go to almost down to 10% plus in order to get that client the $75,000 they need. Now I want you to think about this. You got a 55 year old who's going to retire in 10 years. The US stock market, the S&P 500 has averaged right at about 10%. We all know that past performance is not indicative of future results. Whatever happened in the past is not a guarantee of what's going to happen in the future. Does it make a lot of sense for us to take a 55 year old with only 10 years left and throw them 100% in stocks? See, that's where risk tolerance comes into play. So if I took a pure calculation method to say, I've got to get them to where they can have $75,000 a year in income, then I need to invest in pretty doggone aggressively. That's probably not one of the wisest things to do. But they're going to say, you know what, Justin, I want to be super, 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 super safe. Well, that's not even a 7% rate. That's way back here at 2 and 3% rate, rate of returns. So what do we do? Well, we build a portfolio and we adjust the parameters. So risk tolerance is no more than a guidance to help you identify what your goals are. So in this particular case, we ran a couple of different scenarios and they could increase their savings rate. So instead of saving $2,000 a month, if they saved $4,000 a month, we could drop our rate of return back from 7% back to 4 or 5%. 
Now, not everybody can do that. Not everybody can just double the amount of money they're saving for the next 10 years of their life. This person could, so it was a really easy fix. So what happens if they can't double their savings rate? Well, we can change the goals. Maybe instead of age 65, we could have this individual wait to age 67 to retire. Just moving it back two years means we don't have to invest at 10%. We can slide that rate back and invest more conservatively. Another thing we could do is we could change the $100,000 per year assumption. We could say, you know what? I know you want 100 grand, but could you live off of 90? versus 100. So risk tolerance is simply a measurement of what you want to accomplish in your life and the style portfolio you need to have in order to help you reach your goals. Where the misnomer is and the way these internet ideas come about is it doesn't address increased savings oftentimes, it doesn't address reducing future expenses, or it doesn't address changing the parameters of stretching out the dates. Now, let's run a different scenario. Let's say they had a million dollars up here versus 500,000. Man, they could be ultra conservative at that point given all the parameters. So risk tolerance is a simply a method that an advisor can use to look at the bigger picture and say, you know what, Mr. Client, Mrs. Client here, based on these parameters, I believe we can bring your risk, I believe we can bring your portfolio back a little bit if in this case you're willing to save a little bit more money. And that's all we did in this case. Now, some people can't save the money, so we got to get creative and start moving the parameters around. I hope that gives you a breakdown, a little idea on what risk tolerance is. Risk tolerance is simply looking at the percentage of stocks to bonds.